coming up on 2020 on ID. A family neighborhood and a second grader walking home from school disappears. The hunt continues for a little girl missing for almost two days. She is definitely endangered and we do suspect foul play. As a mother pleads for her child. <laughs> I love you and I just want you to come home. The search uncovers a shocking truth. A neighborhood filled with known sex offenders. You're making my child walk in a jungle of monsters every single day. And families wondering, are there more predators lurking? Every person I see, I'm in my mind, hmm, I wonder. What happened to Summer Thompson? I want to know what this monster did. A mother torn by grief, a community determined to help. We both looked at each other and it was like we had to do something. And a killer with no place to hide. Watch out, we're coming. We're going to get you. Welcome to 2020 on ID. I'm John Quinones. It is said that there's no greater bond than the one between a parent and a child. So when seven-year-old Summer Thompson didn't come home from school one day, her mother Dina began a desperate search. But as Chris Cuomo first reported in 2010, finding Summer would only be the beginning. Dina would soon learn that things in her tight-knit community were not as they seemed. It seemed like a page right out of the 1950s. Orange Park, Florida was a Norman Rockwell town where kids played on manicured lawns and lined up for the ice cream truck year round, where neighbors chatted in each other's front yards and kept a watchful eye out for trouble. This was little seven-year-old Summer Thompson's playground. They nicknamed her Grace because she was so klutzy. I mean, she could not walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. But she loved to dance, she wanted to be a ballerina. But there was nothing awkward about Summer when it came to showing her affection. I mean, she just wanted to hug everybody. <laughs> she just always wanted everybody to be happy with her. Not surprising then that Summer took it to heart whenever she got teased. What does a pretty girl like that get teased about? <sighs> She, you know, she had problems like actually with her speech, like, you know, yiddle instead of little. And she was in some special classes to try to help her with that kind of thing and that they made fun of that, that fact. Our story starts here, October 2009, when that teasing came to a head. Summer was walking home from school with her older sister, her twin brother, and some friends. A schoolmate made fun of her and the two exchanged words. Upset, Summer ran off past the other children, disappearing into the crowd ahead. But when her twin brother and older sister arrived home just 15 minutes later, Summer wasn't there. Dina, a medical receptionist, had a friend waiting at the house to watch the kids that afternoon. I texted my friend and I said, just wanted to check and make sure that everybody made it home okay. He texted me back that Summer didn't come home from school. That was at 4.03 that afternoon, more than an hour after school let out. I mean, panic-stricken from the moment I got that text back. I just, like, I couldn't get that through my brain. Like, what do you mean she didn't come home? She's never done that before. And what calls do you make? Every single person that I could possibly think of in our neighborhood who I had a phone number for, whether it be her older brother's friends, whether it be her older sister's friends, anybody and everybody who lives in my neighborhood. <laughs> Armed with flashlights, neighbors search through yards, parked cars, and sheds. For any Within hours, hundreds of residents from Orange Park, Florida were out in the streets searching. By evening, Dina Thompson was living every parent's worst fear. The unthinkable. Summer had vanished in plain sight. I love you, and I just want you to come home. I just want you to come home. The mystery on everyone's mind how could this have happened without anyone seeing a thing? Nothing. It's a bright and sunshiny day. It's 15 mile an hour school zone. Just about everyone on her street knew Summer, the little girl who considered everyone a friend. This man lived more than a half mile away, but says Summer and her siblings often chatted with him on their way home from school. They loved to play with his dogs. Very trusting. You know, I hate to say it, but you know, she was the type of person, she didn't know no stranger. 
And the school crossing guard says it was hard to miss the little girl who always gave him a hug. But on that day, he says he didn't see her. She is definitely endangered, and we do suspect foul play. By nightfall, Dina Thompson was numb with fear. Summer was out there in the cold and dark. She only had her little, like, jog and suit jacket on, and that's all I can remember thinking is that she's somewhere cold and hungry and scared. I mean, all I could do was stay outside because if she was going to be cold, I was going to be cold. Through the night, neighbors kept hope alive, singing Summer's favorite song. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. The seven-year-old is now the center of a nationwide Amber Alert, even though there is no confirmation she was abducted. Day two, Dina took her appeal nationwide. She's one of the most loving little girls in the whole wide world. She doesn't know a stranger. And if somebody has her, please just bring her home. She's got a twin, and he misses her, and we all miss her, and we just want her to come home okay. That's all I wanted. I, I didn't care at that point if this thing got in trouble or not, as long as she got brought back to me safe, alive. Were you believing at that point? Maybe, maybe? No, I can't explain it, but I just knew that she was gone. On a hunch, one detective thought to search the dumpsters but they'd already been collected and were headed off in 23 different trucks to a landfill in Folkestone, Georgia. Police halted the trucks en route and began sorting through 564 tons of garbage, looking for one little girl. With deep regret and sadness that I have to inform you that a body has been found. 48 hours after Summer went missing, the world finally heard the news which Dina Thompson had already known deep down in her gut. All I remember is losing it. I mean, literally losing it. Neighbors telling me they could hear me, the shrills across the street. The senselessness of it. Why mine? Why anyone's? And my baby was thrown in the trash. How could you do that? How could anyone do that? <laughs> Within hours, police were on the trail of a monster. There is a child killer on the loose, and that's why we're going to catch this person and bring him to justice. This house, which was being renovated at the time, was their first stop. It was the last place anyone said they'd seen Summer alive. He says he was at this home Monday afternoon, and Summer ran up to the place and told workers they were doing a good job on the renovations. According to reports, there was another reason police were possibly interested in this house. The rug, which Summer's body was allegedly wrapped in, may have come from the construction dumpster there. According to these Clay County public records, Vincent Design and Bill was the construction And then company. what seemed like a huge red flag. One of the men working at the construction house was a registered sex offender. But the community was in for another shock. Turns out being a registered sex offender here in this seemingly pristine neighborhood is all too common. 162 registered predators and sex offenders were located within a five mile radius of Summer's home. When we come back, a neighborhood on edge. It's scary to think how many people are actually doing that in our community right now. Every person I see, I'm in my mind, hmm, I wonder. And no one is above suspicion. People want to speculate and think bad things about me when we return. Seven-year-old Summer Thompson has vanished while walking home from school. As police continue their investigation, early clues point to someone nearby. But are they looking in the right direction? Once again, Chris Cuomo. As the hunt continues for a little girl, who's wearing a red jumpsuit, she had a red bow in her ponytail. The missing seven-year-old's mother pleaded for her daughter's return. You don't do this to a little baby and put my baby in the trash. After Summer Thompson disappeared, the residents of Orange Park, Florida, were stunned to learn that their children had been walking through a virtual minefield of registered sex offenders each day. 
162, living in just a five mile radius of Summer's home. It's scary to think how many people are actually doing that in our community right now. And I'm talking not in dozens, I'm talking hundreds, hundreds of cases that we've got out there. It's, uh, it's, it's a very scary thing. Had you any idea? No, no. Another surprise for Dina Thompson was that early on, she and her friends were under suspicion because in many other missing child cases, family members have been implicated. That's one of the things that hurts me the most that people want to speculate and think bad things about me. When it came out how many predators were in the neighborhood, Dina says she took more heat for being a single working mother who let her kids walk home themselves from school. But that decision was really made by the state of Florida. By law, because Dina lived less than a mile away from school, her kids weren't eligible for busing. Unbelievably, in Florida and 22 other states, registered sex offenders can live and work within a thousand feet of a school. That makes no sense to me. You're making my child walk in a jungle of monsters every single day walking home from school. According to these Clay County public records, Vincent Design and Bill is the construction company working on the vacant home on Gano Avenue. George Vincent was one of those offenders. He worked at that construction house along Summer's route from school. But Vincent hadn't worked there that day, and his story checked out. The two men who had been there were also cleared. By all accounts, Summer had left this house alive. Within days, police had accounted for the whereabouts of all registered sex offenders in the area. But Dina Thompson couldn't shake the feeling that the killer was still nearby, watching. Every person I see, I'm in my mind, hmm, I wonder. Neighbors told us they too eyed each other with suspicion. Just to make you just not feel comfortable, not feel safe in your own neighborhood. It's a shame. Several of them voiced concerns about an older man living just down the street, known as Grandpa Charlie, whom they said often took little girls for rides on his bicycle. But further investigation cleared Grandpa Charlie of any connection to Summer's murder. Police then turned their attention to another man. This one lived closer to Summer's school. There's only one house between the one where Summer was last seen and the corner where the crossing guard says he never saw Summer pass by. That home is owned by Richard Corpus. Come on, let's go. Corpus is a 55-year-old handyman who works out of his home and spends a lot of time talking to kids. I'm always outside. I mean, I see the kids in the morning, I'm loading up my equipment. I see them in the afternoon. I'm, you know, coming in from cutting grass. I got lots of kids that pass by. We first met Corpus a few weeks after Summer was killed. We found him standing at the corner near his house, greeting children on their way to school. Here he is pulling out his new puppy from inside his vest. He says kids love dogs. I still will go out and greet kids and let them pet my little dog because I think it brings happiness to uh, the kids in the neighborhood. Corpus says he used to find Summer with her face pressed up against his chain link fence. Just so the dog will go and lick her face. Because she always ran out to pet every animal. Dina knew her daughter was drawn to dogs and it had always worried her. It would drive me crazy. I'd be like, Summer, I know you love animals, but you don't know these people and there's bad in this world and it would hurt mommy so bad if you never came back and my worst nightmare is here. Over the next month, police honed in on Corpus. He says they seized his computers and monitored his calls. I'm not a predator, but I can tell you this, every time the police walk in my house, I start shaking. I know they're following me. I know that they're, um, they're into my computer looking, analyzing, and I'm not trying to get emotional, but I'm telling you quite honestly, there are 30 kids right now that are waiting for a Santa Claus. That's because Corpus usually plays Santa at the local Filipino club each year, but not anymore. Because I'm afraid one of these parents will turn around and try to make me out something that I'm not, but just a good, kind man. Corpus it's says the neighbors had it all wrong. He says he wants to Talk protect the children. I really watch these kids. It's like when, when they come home from school, when they go on to school, like especially at the end of school, but, you know, the reason I watch the kids is because I'm scared for their safety. 
When we get back, police keep Corpus in the crosshairs, but turn their attention in a new direction. Why did the shed at this house suddenly disappear? He would run from the shed back there and just run back and forth, back and forth. He'd be out there sometimes 5, 5.30 in the morning just running. New suspect comes into focus. Stay with us. Since Summer Thompson's murder, police have focused on one possible suspect, but they're about to find another. Meanwhile, Dina reflects on her last moments with Summer. Once again, Chris Cuomo. This is Good Morning Jacksonville. Good morning out there, October 19th. This is Good Morning Jacksonville. Thanks for joining us. Nearly every detail of the morning her daughter disappeared is still vivid in Dina Thompson's mind. And what she remembers most is how Summer didn't want to go to school that day. She had Monday-itis a lot, you know. Monday-itis? Yeah, yeah. She didn't, you know, necessarily want to go to school on, on Monday. Dina spent more time than usual getting Summer ready that morning. And she asked me to put her hair up, and I put her hair up in a red, you know, red rubber band. But there's one detail Dina can't remember, and it haunts her to this day. I like to say that I told her I loved her, I'm pretty sure I did, and that I hugged her, but for some reason, I can't, I can't remember that part of it. But every one of those little acts that you did that morning is an I love you, isn't it? <laughs> but not knowing if you actually said it. <laughs> Cut a couple lawns and... But for police, it was what Richard Corpus was doing that day that concerned them over the next several months. Some found Corpus's alibi suspicious. He claimed he'd mowed the Lions Club lawn that morning, but that wasn't his usual day. He claims he got back home just as the children were getting out of school and unloaded most of his equipment into his garage, even though he was supposedly heading back out to mow another lawn. Corpus says he never saw Summer that day, but he does remember seeing Summer's twin brother and sister pass by. He says he was too busy to chat. And the little boy, I do believe was the twin, asked me, oh, can I have a ride on your trailer? No, 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 no. Stay with the group, okay? I have to go. Corpus explains being in such a hurry by saying he went into his house to do paperwork for about an hour, then headed to the country to mow his friend's grass. Police would later search his truck for blood and fingerprints. But police were putting so much manpower into Corpus, they were missing something right under their noses. Investigators had spent most of their time on this house, Corpus's house, because the crossing guard at this intersection said he didn't see Summer. But what if he missed her? If Summer had moved just a little bit farther down this street, Gano Ave, just two houses down, there is a home that holds many secrets. Turns out police already had a sex crime investigation pending on a 24-year-old man named Jared Harrell, who lived in this house. But police didn't know that because he'd given them a fake address. It took this couple to put the pieces together. Hair stood up on the back of our necks. We both looked at each other and it was like we had to do something. Rod Buchanan is a local landscaper. His wife, Lisa, is a nurse. Two days after Summer's body was found, they were driving down Gano Ave. This is the house here. The vehicle was pulled right there in the driveway. When they spotted Jared Harrell's car at this place, just three houses down from the last place Summer was seen alive. Just a gut instinct, you know, just get that sick, icky feeling. We got goosebumps. Two months earlier, the Buchanans say their children had discovered Harrell's chilling secret. It started when they say they found he'd been stealing things from them while living at their apartment and asked him to move out. They say Harold left immediately, but he left behind his computer. That would be a mistake. They decided to search the computer at that point, and that's when they found, I mean, it was right there on the desktop. It was no effort made whatsoever to hide the material. They told their parents they found child pornography on Harold's computer, a lot of it. Our daughter and her fiance both are just extremely distraught over what they saw on his computer. Hardcore stuff. Yes, sir. Stuff that our children shouldn't have seen. Should have never had to see. 
As soon as they made the alleged discovery, Rod took his wife and daughter to the police to turn over the computer. Flash forward two months to October. And then you hear of really profound tragedy. Summer disappears. Yeah. yeah. And did you know when you got that news about Summer where Harold was living, that he was on Gano Avenue at the time? You know, it's like surreal. You see this child went missing and your heart just goes out for that family and you don't think anything about you or your family at that point. And then we started thinking about it and we're like, wait a minute, Jared lives over there. Rod and Lisa say they drive by Harold's mother's house on Gano Avenue and discover his car parked outside. We, we look both looked at each other and just go, oh, wow. At the time, police were still combing the area for clues to Summer's killer. Rod and Lisa say they drove to the command center and spoke to the lead detective. We informed him that our children had turned in a computer that contained a lot of child pornography and that Mr. Uh, Harold was being investigated by the sex crimes unit. So was the detective able to tell you whether or not they had put this together before you gave him information? No, they had not. He, so, was, he was being investigated on child porn only. And not only did the police not know what you knew, but they had been misled by Harold. Correct. And couldn't place him in the vicinity of Summer, even if they'd wanted to. Correct. Correct. Public records show Harold's family had moved out weeks earlier, but neighbors say Harold was still coming and going from the house on Gano Ave, even after the family moved. Still, could police put Harold in the house the day Summer disappeared? The holidays arrived and Dina Thompson still had no face to put on the monster who killed her little girl and threw her in the trash. What is the hardest part in all of this emotionally for you to deal with? Just knowing that I'm never gonna get to see, you know, her look up at me and smile. I feel like I'm stagnant water. I'm in neutral. I can't move forward until I have some of these answers answered for me. I have to know from my own peace of mind what happened to her. You don't think knowing some things like that could destroy you? No, I think that what I have built up in my mind can't be any worse than what they're going to tell me. Just a few blocks away, detectives were still keeping surveillance on Richard Corpus and waiting for his DNA results from the lab. But in early January, police got some news. Richard Corpus's DNA was not a match. That moved Jared Harrell to the top of the list, and investigators set out to get his DNA for testing. But in many ways, Harrell seemed an unlikely suspect. It appeared he came from a civic-minded family, well-regarded in the community. His stepfather, General Daly, had been highlighted on a local station for his volunteer work during emergencies. General Daly is part of the Duval County Amateur Radio Emergency Services. And Harold's mother, Annis Daly, was a marketing manager for a local chamber of commerce. Her business profile boasts a loving family. But nobody knew the unimaginable truth about Harold's family life and why 21 years ago, a Mississippi judge had ruled his mother unfit and her children had been taken away. The incident made national tabloid headlines in 1989 because Harold's mother, then known as Annis Mizell, had fallen in love with her boss, Joe Newman, a self-styled inventor who claimed God had told him to marry Annis' eight-year-old daughter. He said, you will accept the love of this young child or I'll take your son to be with me. Newman talks about this in a four-hour video he's produced about his life, a video that features his son and his wife of 15 years, whom he was still married to when he performed his own marriages to Harold's eight-year-old sister and Harold's mother, Annis, as well. I'm one hell of a man, uh, and that's what girls have told me who've been with me. Newman claimed God would tell him when to consummate his marriage with Harold's sister. Jared was only three years old. A judge put Harold and his sister in the hands of social service workers. Six years later, Annis would get them back, but relatives say things were never stable very long. Records show Annis had at least 56 different addresses in almost as many cities while Harold was growing up. She'd been married four times, filed for bankruptcy three times, was evicted from at least one home and was found guilty of grand theft 
after allegedly stealing thousands of dollars from her employer. Well, we didn't discuss what was going on with him and his mom and dad. All this came as a shock to Lisa and Rod Buchanan, who had known Harold's current stepfather from their church for several years and never guessed Jared was so troubled. You would look at this guy and you'd say, big, gentle giant. Wouldn't hurt a flea. So how would this gentle giant, who was unknown to Summer Thompson's family, lure her into this house? Well, it turns out there was someone living here that Summer liked a lot. It wasn't Jared Harrell. It was a dog. This dog, which according to a classmate, Summer sometimes stopped to play with on their walk home from school. Shortly after Summer's death, people noticed the dog was gone. And so was this shed which neighbors say had been in the side yard of the house on Gano Ave the day Summer disappeared. And Harold had moved out too shortly after Summer was murdered. He went to live with his mother some 30 miles away, and the shed went with him. According to his new neighbors, Harold was acting strangely from the start. He would run from the shed back there and just run back and forth, back and forth. He'd be out there sometimes 5, 5.30 in the morning just running. They say he'd run for hours as if trying to shake off something that was tormenting him. Just like crazy running, like a kid would run when they're mad. And around January, they also started noticing something else. Suddenly, police were staking out their neighborhood. They would sit like at the end of the road in other people's driveways. Then suddenly, Harold vanished. He fled to Meridian, Mississippi, not far from where he was born. He'd gone to stay with his aunt, who, according to her postings on the internet, is a self-proclaimed artist of the macabre, exhibiting a fascination for death, tortured bodies, and mutilation. Police track Harold down, and in February, they arrest him on 29 counts of child pornography based on computer evidence brought to them by the Buchanans months earlier. Harold pleads not guilty. They also name him as a person of interest in the Summer Thompson case. Mr. Harrell, you are charged with 29 counts of possession of photographs and sexual performance by a child. Police then searched Harold's mother's house and the one on Gano Avenue in hopes of finding evidence to link him to Summer's murder. When we get back, the questions begin to mount. Why hadn't police gotten Harold off the street before that fateful day when Summer passed by? And Harold's mother makes a surprising jailhouse call. And the thing is, is that I'm your alibi, so I have to be real careful. Stay with us. Jared Harrell is in jail on child pornography charges, and police have named him a person of interest in Summer Thompson's murder. But why had it taken so long to arrest him? And would authorities find enough to prove their case? Once again, Chris Cuomo. Police worked late into the night as they searched both houses where Jared Harrell lived, looking for evidence to link him to the murder of Summer Thompson. I never really noticed him. I never really suspected this guy. Two houses away, Richard Corpus, the man who police had suspected for months, was breathing a sigh of relief. If, if I didn't have a family, I'd probably be dead. I probably would have killed myself around Christmas. Because that's how deep it got to me. Because I couldn't clear my name. In the meantime, Jared Harrell was sitting in a Mississippi jail on a million dollar bond. A few days after his arrest for child pornography, Harrell's mother, gives him a call. Keep your chin up, keep your mouth shut, and get an attorney. Honey, just don't, just don't believe anything. Honey, I don't believe anything. Trust me. And the thing is, is that I'm your alibi, so I have to be real careful. Police records say Harold and his mother both claim they were together during the critical hours that summer disappeared. So who was this 24-year-old who still lived with his mother and depended on her financially? Relatives say Harold had always been overweight and slow in school. He'd often been picked on, even by his two younger stepbrothers. His MySpace profile, taken down just before the arrest, paints a picture in contrasts. There was the 250-pound kid who could laugh at fat jokes on YouTube videos. Is this face really strong enough? 
and then glimpses of someone who can't take it anymore, seemingly wanting revenge. Tops on his playlist a song called Waking the Demon, in which the victim of bullying is transformed by blind rage, viciously attacking and killing his tormentor. A peek into the mind of someone who's about to snap, or nothing more than just teenage angst. We were lucky that when they threw him out that he didn't go off the deep end and kill him. To be honest with you, that's what I thought. Rob Buchanan's daughter, Katie, was Harold's former roommate. He says when Katie turned in Harold's computer two months before Summer went missing, she told police she feared Harold might have done more than just look at those pictures. He might have known some of the children. After all, Harold had plenty of access to kids. He babysat the children of family members, and they lived in a neighborhood filled with young children. But it would take six weeks before police would get a search warrant to look at Harold's computer. And several more months would pass before they searched Harold's home, even though they'd been tipped off by the Buchanans that Harold lived nearby. Turned out Katie's fears were real. Police say they found Harold's camera containing a video with horrifying images of Harold molesting a three-year-old child. The victim was a relative. Harold was charged with 26 more counts, including molestation. Again, he pleaded not guilty. The mother of the child he'd molested recognized where the alleged crime took place, in Harold's bedroom on Gano Ave. And the question on everybody's mind was, what took police so long to get Harold off the street? What if they had acted sooner when the computer had first been brought to their attention back in August? Would Summer still be alive? Of course he could have been off the streets. He could have been Tammy off the Lears streets. is a computer forensics expert who's worked on several high-profile cases involving child porn. She says the concern that Harold might have known at least one of his victims should have been an immediate red flag. That is probable cause in all of the cases I've seen. That was enough to look. That was enough to go in and get a search warrant so that they could do a forensic preview. Lears says what makes this case different is that police had a tip that Harold might have been molesting someone he knew. They should have acted immediately to see whether there was a child in danger. Because as it turns out, that was true. 2020 repeatedly asked the sheriff's office for an interview about their investigation. They declined. But police issued a statement saying they followed protocol. They say Harold claimed he was being set up. And after an ambiguous response on a polygraph from one of the roommates, police say they first had to rule out Katie and her fiance as suspects. Our children were basically treated as primary suspects. and. Their internet records were searched, their financial records were searched. They actually had to go through lie detector tests. Our baby cried because they searched her, her underwear. underwear drawer. For two months, they investigated them. You don't wonder, under the category of what if, that time had been spent looking at Harold instead of your daughter and her fiance? I think they were looking at him at the same time. He just wasn't cooperating. But the Buchanans actually defend police. Who's to say that even if they went out and arrested him when we turned it in, with being his first offense, that he would have been out the next day or two anyways. And you know, there's a lot of what ifs. What if our kids had not looked at that computer? What if our kids had turned the other way when they found what they found on that computer? A lot of questions wound up coming up about the investigation and why it took so long. What's your take on that? I would say to all the people that have questioned that, to look at it from just very simple point of view. If I came up to your house or your office, picked up your computer and walked it into a police department and told them that it contained something illegal and that it belonged to you. Would you expect the authorities to rush out and arrest you and ruin your name, your life, your reputation, all on my say-so? So you're forgiving of the timeline. You say these things take yes, time. Yes, absolutely. Buchanan says it wasn't what police did that bothered him. It's how the public reacted harassing his family after news broke, even making death threats. I really expected the public to be behind them 100%. I expected the public to be out there saying, wow, way to go, guys. They've been accused of turning on a family friend for a reward. 
Ironically, they can't even get the reward because they turned Harrell in to police instead of to the Crime Stoppers hotline. Buchanan says they could have used that money to pay for his children's therapy because of all of this. She still has nightmares. And the stuff that she saw was so horrific that she can't get it out of her head? It's just burning images. Even the detective told us it's stuff that no one should ever have to see in their lifetime. When we get back, police finally say how Summer was killed and the family is overcome. Stay with us. Watch out, we're coming. We're gonna get you. This was Dina Thompson just days after Summer disappeared. And this was five months later, after news broke that Jared Harrell had been charged with the murder of her little girl. Jared, Harrell, we got you, and you ain't getting away. Police said they had a DNA match along with other forensic evidence. He contacted Summer as she was walking home from school. We have evidence that will show that Harold assaulted Summer and killed her and dumped her body in a dumpster, which ultimately ended up in a landfill in Folkestone, Georgia. They were certain they had their man, but Harold pleaded not guilty. I mean, I want to talk to him. Months earlier, before she ever knew whom would be charged, Dina told us she wanted to meet the killer face to face. What would you say? Why? Give me your best excuse, your best reason as to why you had to do this. I just want to hear how pathetic he is. Did somebody tick you off that day? Did, you know, you, you couldn't get a woman your age? But after the arrest, we wondered whether the passage of time or learning about Harold had changed her perspective. Does it help you understand where he got it from, how he got to this point? No, I don't feel sorry for him. You make choices in life. And all of us go through trials and tribulations. I've been through similar circumstances in my life. You make choices. Stop the cycle. End the abuse. Don't do this. After Harold was charged, Dina finally did get a few answers, but they were difficult to hear. Just hearing asphyxiation, that's enough to, to destroy you to break you down. It, it While Dina was like talking, her sister was overcome and fainted. At the press conference, your own family couldn't take it, hearing it. You still have a desire for detail with something like this? I have to know. And I feel like I deserve to know the, the intimate details of what happened to her. She was my baby. She was my responsibility. And I, I want to know what this monster did. I was there when she came in, and I want to know <laughs> if she had to suffer when she went out. And after all the shocking information this manhunt has unearthed about her neighborhood, Dina told supporters... Well, I'm glad he's behind there, but there's many more lurking in the depths, and, and that's what we've got to try to figure out, how to get to them. Nobody's safe. What hurts the most is that, as a parent, I feel like I failed. Do you blame yourself? Absolutely. Why? Because I'm her mother and I was supposed to protect her. I was supposed to keep her safe. And I failed at that. You failed. You failed by sending her off that morning, doing her hair and telling you that you loved her and sending her with her brother and sister like you did every other day? I know that it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense though, right? Not to a mom. <laughs> but at some point you have to let that go, right? I guess eventually, I don't know when that'll be. Dina says right now she wants Harold to get the death penalty, but she finds little comfort in seeing justice served. You set yourself up to think that it's going to make it all better. You're going to be normal again. And I won't ever be normal again. My normal. Dina says she has a new normal, advocating for children. Yes. She wants laws changed, right, allowing Amber Alerts to be issued sooner, getting predators yeah. away from schools, like, and allowing all children to ride the school bus. God's given me a big mouth, and I plan on using it. 
To start, Dina kicked off the newly formed Summer Thompson Foundation at a benefit concert. I am officially reclaiming our children's innocence and their safety. These animals will not get us, we'll get them. Justice for summer means justice for children. She says it was a moment of healing for the whole family, especially hearing this from Summer's older sister, Abby. Just know that Summer's never going to be gone. She's always going to be in your heart. And it was a moment of triumph, too, when Abby and her brother sang their tribute to Summer. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Seeing your family be strong, seeing them be happy and having joy in life. That's the power. That's the power. And for Summer's twin, a mother's special wisdom to help him carry on. He's asked me, do you think that she has her invisible eyes where she can see through the roof and see through the top bunk and see me? And I said, she's got her invisible eyes. And I tell him that he'll see her in, in his dreams and that someday, none of us know when, we'll all be back together. And I said, it will be like you were never apart. You have a message for parents. What is it? What do you want to tell parents like me? Your child could be taken in the blink of an eye and you'll never see them again. And that is the worst feeling I can even imagine. If they want to do something with you and you think they're going to make a bigger mess, so what? Play games with them, read stories to them, tell them you love them, tell them often. Love your kids. They're, they're a gift from above and you don't know how long you have with them. Love them with every ounce of your being. Please don't take my sunshine away. Jared Harrell later pled guilty to the murder of Summer Thompson. He was sentenced to life in prison. As of 2015, the changes to the laws that Dina advocated for have yet to be enacted, but she continues to hope they one day will be. I'm John Quinones. Please join us next time for another edition of 2020 on ID.